So the other thing is um, I have a Bluetooth plugin in development, currently only Android version, and it is working. And I want to show you something. So uh, I have an iPod here. Uh, it runs a uh, special application that emulates uh, virtual Bluetooth low power uh, app uh, device. Right now it's set in cycling uh, power meter. Uh, so if you go to the cycling power, you can see all the different bits of information that it holds. And I have um, an application running on my phone. So currently it's only a few buttons, but it's really much going on under the hood. Let me share the screen and show you how it works. Awesome. Now, where is the share button? Uh, the green one there at the bottom of the screen, if you're on the Mac, it's at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you can see it. Uh, so yeah. Android Studio running with uh, Bluetooth application uh, running, and you can see admin output. So right now I'm hitting uh, start scanning of devices, uh, and you can see it uh, produces me a scan event with the device name uh, of the cycling powers that I just showed you, and also by uh, printing everything into here you can kind of see the API that I have developed. So this device object has get one state, function, set pairing confirmation, that sort of stuff, address, set pin, and, and all of that. So when I discover such uh, device, I click connect uh, in my application. You can see the connection state. Uh, connection state change event has been uh, initiated and it is connected and now you can have uh, a get interface to your Bluetooth device. This is really where everything is happening, uh, all the interaction with your data. Uh, so using the get you can query the services and characteristics. Services and characteristics is the base of uh, Bluetooth low energy um, API and interaction. So you interact with the device using services and characteristics. So uh, services ha uh, have a set of different characteristics and you can query them, read them, read their data and, and other stuff. Uh, it has a number of them. And if I scroll down, uh, you will see message. So there is another event that I uh, read one characteristic and it will it outputs me a characteristic, uh, its UED and its value. So it says I put touch. So uh, this string right here indicates that I can successfully uh, read a property of a Bluetooth low energy device. So the plugin working. That's really great. And you can have your data in very in many different uh, formats as a float value, as an integer value, as a string, or as a stuff. So it's um, it's uh, the API of this plugin is very uh, broad, and you can do anything uh, with this. So you can implement iBeacon library. You can implement some other stuff and it will work just fine. Let me show the code. Yeah, no, Bluetooth, uh, at least, uh, I know Bluetooth is a, a kind of a, as you say, sort of a broad topic, um, but you know, Bluetooth in some form is definitely something that's been heavily requested for a long time. Making it a plugin is, is, is a great way of kind of at bolting that onto the, the core API. So um, I hope you can see. Uh, it says it started screen sharing, but I don't see anything. You must be. You should see my editor with code. I see it. 
You see it? I don't see it. Oh, now I see it. It popped in. Okay. Yeah, I see it. Got okay, it. Great. So uh, here is the application. Uh, a set of buttons, like start scanning. You can see I call uh, Bluetooth, start scan, and I have a event listener uh, that uh, just uh, pops uh, displays information on what device uh, it found it. So, and if I found a uh, device with the name Cycling Power, which is an elated device, I save the device for later use, for connection. Uh, and when I hit connect, uh, I execute this big function, uh, and it has a lot of listeners, individual listeners. You gonna use them when you communicate with the device, and I. Uh, set it for a single function listener, and in this listener function, I <clears throat> differentiate between events by its name. So when I connect to the device, uh, I query it for the services which it provides, and when the services are discovered, I uh, go through them in a loop in all services and print them out. And for each service, I also get all the characteristics that it holds and also print them out and request to read them. You cannot read all the characteristics uh, right away, so I perform it in, uh, with a delay. Uh, and uh, when, it's, uh, when the reading is completed, it sends on characteristics uh, read event, we, and I can use uh, their characteristics uh, object to query to, to extract the value. As you can see here, uh, so it's very easy to uh, get the information from the device. So that's it for the demo. Very nice. And so this this is a uh, a sample app. Is that basically what we're saying? Yeah, it's my uh, kind of sample app. It just because it just exists to make sure that uh, the application works. But a proper sample app would be something uh, something more beautiful, I would say. Something, <laughs> something more pretty with some buttons, like a you know, list of all the devices. Yeah. Tech. It's just a very bare-bone example of what you can use with minimum usage gotcha. of AI. Gotcha. So, yeah, the reason I was asking, I guess, was just because um, of the hard-coded value for what was the, the initial thing that you were look, listening for? The name of the... Um, yeah. Recycling power, power, yeah. Recycling power. So is that, I mean, in, in, in a, in a real-world situation... Uh, in a real-world situation, you would want user to pick up which device you want. Okay. To. And then you just pull and then, and then figure out that, figure that out and then mm -hmm. store it and then reference it later. Yeah, you okay. save the device uh, reference and then you submit it to the connect okay. option. And it connects to this device. Nice, nice. So what do you see people developing with this? Like, well, and maybe they're opening this up to the panel to, to answer this question too. What, what do you guys, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you say, hey, Bluetooth capabilities, what would you do with that? Uh, well, people want iBeacon support and uh, uh, really there are some uh, applications that communicate with a certain uh, custom devices like health equipment, like, I don't know, fitness, um, bracelet and this sort of stuff. What about sending and receiving arbitrary data? It's possible. Not tested, but possible. Because my, whenever I think Bluetooth, my number one uh, uses are uh, creating a remote device that I can then use as like a input device for whatever console or, uh, you know, for example, Apple TV. I know you said this doesn't work yet on. Uh, this is uh, Android so far, but it would be sweet to be able to hook up to Apple TV and then use my Android device, my iPhone, as a remote input. I actually don't device. know if they provide this is, uh, API on Apple TV. Do they? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Somebody made some noise. I don't know if they provide API 
uh, on Apple TV. Hmm. I have to change this out. So that's just, I'm just using that as an example. But um, being able to send data back and forth, arbitrary data between two devices or devices would be my number one use. I also implemented the features that you can um, become a fake device and become listeners, like uh, your device, your phone becomes a, uh, a peripheral device and you can hook it up to uh, from another device. So basically you can have a multiplayer game that uh, sends data between wireless. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking is uh, uh, easily implemented multiplayer networks, peer-to-peer -peer type stuff. Mm -hmm. Think of a game like Space Team or something like that that's not dependent on everybody joining the same Wi-Fi network or going through a remote server. Mm -hmm. Blues yeah, all having to join a Wi-Fi network. Are, uh, limited on uh, the data. Um, uh, what's it called? The speed and uh, the volume of data that you are sending. It's very limited, but uh, with some clever coding, it can be achieved for sure. I was going to use it for uh, this. What is this? Uh, uh, my Pebble. Oh. The, the smartwatch thing. Well, what would you be doing with that? I mean, like, what, what, would, be your, what would be your use case? Oh, uh, for, well, first, I'd probably write a plugin on top of uh, Sergey's plugin. Uh, try to get, like, a uh, Pebble SDK working on it. Yes, yeah, so and the, the beauty of this plugin is that it is low level, and anybody can write write the uh, wrappers around that. Uh, and uh, on the web, there's an uh, open database of all the standard low energy characteristics and their description and how they must behave. So if some device implements uh, a certain protocol, uh, you can hook up a Lua library that interprets that protocol. And what you would only do in a uh, current application is say something like uh, library dot open uh, health te temperature device and hook up a listener that uh, listens for the health temperature measurement without any shenanigans of Bluetooth. Uh, opening and uh, parsing the characteristics, discovering services that can be done in Lua, and it will be very easy. Hmm. Shenanigan free. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for developers, so I'm making more plugins on top of it for sure. Sweet. And so, when is this going to be available? When can we? Uh... Uh, Android binary is ready. I was going to uh, get it on the store, but the documentation is a problem because it's very based and will require a lot of time to make it proper. So maybe I hook it up on the server and say, hey, you can uh, just uh, get it and see what you can do with uh, just or uh, reverse engineering the API by yourself a little. Or maybe I can just provide some basic uh, list of functions and what they, do they uh, require, what parameters, without uh, describing much. Who was it that was doing LDOC? Was doing the, the Lua doc, right? Can we? I don't like putting documentation. Yeah, you don't like the documentation in the source code? Mm. Mm. Are you oh, are, are you using uh, the Bluetooth uh, like I, I'm looking at the feature request right now, and uh, are you using the uh, the Git like the uh, uh, the Bluetooth serial uh, GitHub on uh, like there's a link on the feature request. Uh, I, I I don't think so. Okay, I was just curious. What what is it again? What GitHub repo for what? You drop, like, the, uh, drop oh, the link. In the, drop the link in the chat, and that'll that'll help. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, please. Well, I just, okay. I'll post the first of all the feature requests. I'll grab the link too. Cool. It's on, it's on the feature request, but I'll post that too. Okay. 
So yeah. On a Bluetooth serial plugin for PhoneGap. Yeah, that's zip in that phone gap. Well, you know, you always could like port it, steal mm -hmm. it. No, I don't have to. I have Java API from Android. Okay. And actually, I don't think this is low energy. I think this is a uh, previous version of Bluetooth, like 2.1 or something. It's not low energy. Huh. Yeah, it's not. I think it's not low energy. I, I think I was reading, I was actually curious to uh, see if there's like a next version of the, uh, was it Bluetooth? Uh, I guess it's like 5.0 coming soon. I don't know how far away that is though. Oh, the, de the description says that uh, Android version uses classic Bluetooth and iOS version uses low energy. Oh, okay. So, but uh, my plugin will be low energy on Android and on iOS. Very cool. I'm looking forward to that and come out. I know a lot of people have requested it and they'll be happy when it's available.